It will be 12 p.m. Eastern. We've got a big opportunity ahead of us talking this Spain and Germany battle. And we look back at kind of how these teams got here and what they were to accomplish. There's probably no bigger darling of the Euro 2024 matchups than Spain from get-go, from first ball being tossed out there on the grass. Everyone was talking Spain, 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 Spain. They go out there, they whoop up Georgia four to one, unnecessarily whoop up because they were already on their way after beating Albania and Italy. They also handled Croatia. Now we go out there, we see them playing Germany. And as far as that German matchup is concerned, uh, probably a little disappointing. Hungary, you know, they get those guys down 2-0. Switzerland is a push, a draw, a 1-1 opportunity. And then they handle Denmark. Clearly, uh, maybe a little bit of mediocre matchups as these two teams get going. Let's start off with MMA, Jeff. Let's talk about Spain versus Germany, Jeff. What do you think about this matchup and how do you want to get paid? I got to say, you know, following up on your comments there, I know you're talking the country, but there isn't a team worth a shit from Georgia. You know damn well. <laughs> but I do got to say, why is your money not on Spain? Sitting here, uh, they were at even money last night. Uh, I got to see where the line has shifted today. But, you know, Spain hasn't lost a comp uh, competitive matchup to Germany in six straight uh, six straight plays. Uh I think Spain's going to beat them with the speed on the outside. Um, I, they're going to outscore them here. And uh, I know Gaucho and I were talking about it last night. So my money's on Spain on this one. Uh, Gaucho, what do you have to say about this one? Yeah, you got to love Spain. I do have Spain as the, the best team in this tournament. I think Germany is a close second. <clears throat> um, tons of talent on both both sides here. I'm going to be looking live at some uh, both teams to score and over. The only thing that kept me off Spain, Spain has never defeated a host nation in a knockout round on their soil. And Spain, or pardon me, um, a host nation has never lost a quarterfinal. So those are two trends that go way back. Um you know, they don't have anything to do with these teams really in particular. But that's enough to keep me off of the pre-flop. But uh, I can't talk anybody out of Spain. They looked great. And uh, I do have them the, the best team in this uh, in this tourney, no doubt about it. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely rolling with Spain. And, and as we were talking backstage prior to this, uh, the draw is also something to look at. Um, pretty uh, even 1-1 one, one draw. Um, not, mm -hmm. not a bad look. Uh, the line is uh, juiced to the under, I believe. Um, so the, the draw is definitely in play as well. Uh, my money's on Spain, and uh, hope everyone follows and uh, cashes. Our current numbers as we look at the board have Spain as a plus 165 money line. Slight favorite over Germany, who is plus 180. The total sitting at two and a half, but currently on DraftKings, the under is juiced at minus 130. And our guy Fernando Mendoza checking in. You know, it's amazing to me. Here we go. Footy action. It's certainly not the hockey that I'm used to, but they track shots on target versus just general shots. You know, mm -hmm. if you get the ball and you kick it and you miss the goal, you still get a shot. But here we go. We've got an opportunity for one shot on target at minus 120. Lou, it looks like that might be a spot that you want to get involved with, but talk to us about this battle. That's a great look, too. Musial has been the informed player for Germany. Uh, I have a future tournament future on Spain. So I'm not really willing to get involved on a money line side here. I actually favor the overs. It's probably a trap. I don't care. I would ladder it. Uh, I'm, I'm not really convinced on Germany's back line. I haven't been coming into this tournament. Scotland went down a man. They gave up an own goal at the end, but Scotland's not really a threat going forward. Hungary just had a horrible form going into this tournament. They didn't do anything against Germany, but they didn't test Germany and their back line. And then Switzerland had some moments, and we'll get to them later. Switzerland definitely had some moments on Germany. They haven't really played anybody that's giving them a true test in the back line. Denmark could have scored. That was a little agreed. On the Spain side, look, if you look at their stats, they didn't concede against Italy, who looks awful. The Croatia game, it was 3 nothing, but that scoreline doesn't represent what Croatia was doing in the second half of that game. They, they had a penalty. They got taken back. They look good. Spain has some vulnerabilities in the back as well. These teams are great going forward. It's host country. It's the first game to lead off the quarters. It's got to, I think they're going to come out exciting. I don't think there's going to be much of a feeling out process. And if we get a goal in the first 20 minutes, this thing could be 
crazy. This thing could be a 40. Yeah. So both teams are scoring over is plus money, plus 140 on one book fanatics that I looked at. I think I think there are worse plays you can make that. Both teams to score and over expecting goals. That would be a hell of a way to kick off this quarterfinal spot out there. Yeah. The host nation trying to get this thing figured out, but at the same time, I like to see some goals as well here. Dan, do you think we see some scoring? How does this thing progress in your opinion? Yeah, like I tend to sort of side with what Jeff said, actually. You know, like I see Spain progressing. I could see a 1-1 potential. Um, but I all, I can also see plenty of goals as well. And, and that's why this game for me is so tricky. But I just like Spain to qualify. Um, I can get that at minus 112. I don't know what it is on your books. Uh, you guys might have to check that. Um, but I just like them to qualify. You know, you don't have to sweat that draw just in case the game does slow down a bit. But I just see this being a really physical um, midfield battle of a game. And it's Tony Cruz's last game. Uh, he, he bowed out for his club winning the Champions League final with Real Madrid. So that's just another thing to keep in mind that it is Tony Cruz's swan song this tournament. So... It's just going to be a great game to watch regardless. So I'm really looking forward to it. But I just think Spain are the better team. And I, I think they're going to advance into the semis. I like it. I like it. And uh, we've got our guys subhuman. What do you think here? I know Jeff kind of teased it with you there, talking about some of the speed with these boys. What say you, subhuman gaucho? Yeah, well, I do like uh, Fernando's look there on Musiala. Um, I'll probably stay off this one pre-flop. I thought about maybe sprinkling the one one two two exactas. Uh, I do think we see goals here, but it is it is a you know. Am, am I? I don't know. Maybe I stack up and take the over. Maybe I just wait. Um, this this is one to watch though. Of of all four games, this is going to be the one. These are mm. these are the two top teams in my opinion. So I'll stay away pre flop for the most part. You know, it's one of those opportunities where you see these guys and you got top scoring teams in the tournament. Germany, not afraid to put the ball into the net. I'll talk about shots on target and how it gets done. 10 versus nine goals kind of robbed us, I think, of an opportunity to see an incredible matchup. Reminiscent, speaking of America, uh, we got USA and Team Russia in a little year called 1980 in the ice hockey. Uh, Olympics out there in Lake Placid. And what did we see? Well, it wasn't the final matchup, but it's the matchup everybody remembered. And I think this Germany-Spain game is probably going to be a little bit similar. You know, when we look at the rest of the games and we talk about the rest of this tournament, uh, you know, I think they're definitely taking this opportunity. And, and uh, unfortunately, um, you know, because of the seeding, because of the pairing, we're seeing probably the best matchup in the tournament now in these quarters. And uh, I like what Dan had to say, though. You know, for me, this is one of those opportunities. I know where there's a lot of trepidation as we go across the board around how these jobs are going to get done and who's going to win the game. But look, at Spain's a big favorite. Uh, we saw collectively across the board that the Sharps love these guys. A lot of us are holding futures on Spain. Uh, you know, maybe it's not the sexiest play of all, but sometimes you got to get your cash and get the hell out of there and Spain to advance at minus 115 currently on DraftKings. I think that's just a no mess around. Get this money. The numbers look pretty split, and you can see with that money line, it almost has a feeling that we go extras. I'll tell you, the way I will attack every single one of these games is if we get extras, we're tied at halftime. It even looks close to being extras. Uh, the way I'm going to fire away is I'm going to take the live betting both teams to win by penalties. Uh, those are going to be some plus 10 to 1 opportunities as we advance, and uh, we will turn that frown upside down. But for me, this is Spain to advance. I don't think Germany has the capability this year between the speed, the experience, and the, the set pieces that Spain has out there. They're the guys to get the job done. So, like me, some Spain to advance. Again, currently minus 115 on DraftKings. We got uh, Camber Ribbons in the house. Says, have there been significant team roster changes from last year? Then the trend holds. I don't know. Does anybody want to speak to the roster changes? Have there been significant roster changes to these teams, or are they just experiencing kind of their maturity, their their peak in performance? There are a couple of German. There's a center back for Germany that that's currently way out, way out of form. Nicolas Sule. He uh, got injured just before the Euros and actually put on a lot of weight. 
And um, I think that's affected his chances of really fitting back into that lineup. But like I was saying earlier, Germany are a team that's in flux. Like they're, they're getting older players are retiring. They've got some new blood coming up through the ranks. So, you know, this Spanish team is just really starting to sort of come back to what they used to be like in the 2008. Like I really see them pushing up for the next World Cup as one of the, the top teams to really watch in regards to, you know, you got Argentina fighting from the other side and Brazil, who are pretty weak at the moment as well. But I just think that the, the flux is an advantage of the Spanish team. Like the key players for Germany going out, they're just too crucial. And Tony Cruz, he's, ama- he's an amazing player. But he's also 30. Was he 37? 80, so, 84. Yeah, 84. Yeah. That's so, <laughs> good for 84. Yeah. So, yeah, that, I, there has been a lot of change in that team, but I just think it's going to be a great game. So I'm just, I just can't wait. Can I add something to this as well? That, of course. So it's not just like, and I completely agree that Sule is just, and he's like nine feet tall. The guy's like a monster. But the most important thing for me on Germany is, a change in style and formation. They changed to Julian Nagelsmann, who I love as a coach, very young, but he's very offensive minded. He's done a lot of work with not a lot of talent, like Hoffenheim, Leipzig, then he got a little more money, but this is a, a forward on the front foot kind of coach. Some of these German coaches, you know, when Manuel Neuer was in top form, Germany was kind of, could win one nothing games. I don't think Germany's suited for that anymore. I think they have enough talent offensively with Havertz, Fulkrug coming off, Musiala, Cruz with set pieces still. But the way they're coached is so different now. Just an aggressive, aggressive approach that we haven't seen from Germany since, like, their glory years. So it's, to Dan's point, like, they've got some frailties in the back. And that's why I think they're just taking this approach of, like, absolute forward play. So really cool stylistic change from Germany. I mean, what they did to Scotland was was criminal. I think the only position in their back line, too, that's only, like, their their spot where they're vulnerable is their left back because that's not really locked in. They've got uh, David Rahm's been playing there for Germany and they've got middle start who's been coming up, but that's, that's like their weak spot. You know, that's, that's just where I see it uh, as an advantage. So yeah. I like it. Joe T said, what does Spain have to do to advance? Short answer. Win. <laughs> score, score more, they have to score more goals than Germany. <laughs> They do that. I like their odds. Yeah, this is a knockout round, Joe. So, so no draws here. If it goes to a draw, we'll see overtime. If the overtime goes to a draw, we'll see penalty kicks. So, somebody's getting sent home after this I, one. I have a question for Dan. Actually, who do you favor in a shootout here? Mm. In a shootout, it just depends what sort of substitutions they make. But I think Spain have a deeper team for that. So, I probably favor Spain. Mm. That's a great question. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a tricky one. You know, um, I guess real quick here, we wrap this one up and we move to the next level here, boys. Is there any chance that Germany can go out there and pull the upset? What oh, yeah. is their path to victory? I think Germ- Germany's path to victory. Sorry to sorry to cut you off, sir, but no, if you if you look at these two teams, the one statistic that just jumps off the page to me is that in all of Germany's games so far in the Euro Euros, on average, they've controlled 66% of the possession in games. So for me, is, is if they can hold the ball and keep the ball and control the game and they just get a goal in, they'll just park the bus. They don't have to worry mm-hmm. about getting forward. That, I, think, I feel that's their, their, their pathway. But also if it goes the other way, they like playing the long ball out of out of defense in the, on the counter attack. So, if they are on the back foot and they're not controlling the possession, they'll be looking to make a counter attack. And they've got the fast players to to do that. They've got you know, Musiala, Wurtz, Kai Havertz. You know, people forget he's actually been in amazing form at the end of the Premier League season. So, he hasn't really sort of scored much in this tournament. I think he's only got one goal. But, um, you know, that's something to keep in mind. I, I see that as their path. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You, you hit on a lot of the important points that I, I was going to touch on as well. Um, you know, this is part of the reason that I, I think I like corners. I think if Germany goes down early, you know, they like to get their midfield quite a bit forward. 
And Spain's really deadly on the break. Uh, Jeff earlier was talking about how uh, how speedy that youth is on the outside. And so if Germany is getting everybody forward, they're probably going to generate some corners themselves. But Spain will generate some on the break as well when when those guys get loose. So that's something to think about. Uh, Joe T, too, he, he mentioned. Uh, so why won't, why won't you take uh, the plus money on the Spain money line instead of to advance? The, the the worry about the money line is that is a that is a money line for regulation. So if this goes to a regulation draw, you end up a loser. You take that minus one fifteen to advance, and that gives you the chance for them to win in overtime or penalties, which is not out of the question at all in this game. You know, I think across the board when you look at the four games that we have on deck. If you were going to take a money line spot here, and uh, if you're thinking about goals getting the job done, these two teams don't seem likely to park the bus uh, and play this thing deep here. This seems like they want to run and gun and try to figure this thing out. So um, not a bad opportunity to think about that. But, yeah, I think Sub said it right, Joe, there. You, you know, we're looking at 90 minutes or regulation time versus uh, the full smash. So big opportunity for consideration there. And then we see our guy NJ Stryker says both teams to score. And the over seven and a half corners at plus 115. Yeah, like that. Look there. yeah. yeah Mike, can I add one more thing to this Germany? Course, how, how they win. I, and I think this plays into what, what uh, Subhuman said here is the one place where I think Spain could be vulnerable is set pieces. Germany's really well mm-hmm. drilled in that. Cruz is excellent at it. They're also a bigger team. Mm-hmm. So I think that Germany getting set pieces and Spain, like I said, this is where they've been vulnerable. Like in transition, they're okay. But these set pieces have, like, even Croatia had a lot of success little unlucky, but the XG was there. Expect the goals is there for Croatia. I think that's one way that Spain could be vulnerable. But either way, this is just, even the market is not sure. I mean, when you see a team, when you see a drop plus 210 and both money lines are right in that 180 range, like even the market right. is like, we don't, we're not really sure. So should be an awesome game. I think it'll be a lot of fun. It's a great way to kick this thing off. And, uh, you know, it'll be that opportunity. Like I said, I, I just like to take the favorite. It's kind of like yesterday, you know, some of these games where, you know, we don't want to overcomplicate it, overthink it here. To me, it's a matter of saying, uh, you know, the Spain, the the favorite, the sharp money, the opportunities, and you're getting them at a reasonable price. Germany isn't a dog to sleep on, though, here. And, mm-hmm. you know, as we talk about sleep 